In this video, I'm gonna explain the bore effect, also known as the bore shift. So what is it? Well, think about it. If you are exercising, your rate of aerobic respiration increases. Yeah, especially in muscles, if you're exercising, they require more ATP for contraction. So their rate of aerobic respiration increases and this means more carbon dioxide is produced. Now, carbon dioxide will obviously diffuse from the muscle fibers into the blood plasma and carbon dioxide dissolves in the blood plasma to form carbonic acid, yeah? It's an acid. That carbonic acid is then gonna dissociate into hydrogen ions, and you're gonna see an increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now, what does that do to the pH? Well, the clue is here. I just remember carbonic acid. So obviously the blood pH decreases, or you could say it becomes more acidic, yeah? Uh, a lower pH is obviously more acidic. So let's go through what we've got so far. Increase in respiration during exercise, particularly of muscle cells. They're doing more respiration, producing more CO2. There's more CO2 diffusing into the blood, which forms carbonic acid that lowers the pH of the blood or makes the blood more acidic. Now this is going to affect hemoglobin's structure. It causes a conformational change in hemoglobin. Remember, hemoglobin is a protein. It has a specific tertiary structure. It also has a quaternary structure because it does consist of four polypeptide chains, each with its own heme group that associates with oxygen. But because we've lowered the pH, it's more acidic in the blood, this does alter the shape of hemoglobin. We say it causes a conformational change in the shape of hemoglobin, and it lowers hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Now we can go to the graph and see if we can make sense of this. So here is our dissociation curve. On the y-axis, we've got percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen, and we've got two scenarios, low partial pressure of CO2, high partial pressure of CO2. Now we're talking about the Bohr shift, so we're shifting to high partial pressure of CO2. Remember, because there's more respiration, more carbon dioxide moving into the blood, High CO2, we can see on this graph that the affinity that hemoglobin has for oxygen has been reduced. I mean, you can kind of see, right, this line is lower than this line, which is a reminder for you to say in your exam, hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen is reduced. And if its affinity for oxygen is reduced, this means hemoglobin hemoglobin disassociates with oxygen more readily or more easily. It's not holding on to it as tightly, right? It's going to dissociate or unload with oxygen more easily. And you can see that on the graph because if you compare the same partial pressure on these two curves, at low partial pressures of CO2, the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen is much higher. At high partial pressures of CO2, if we look at the same point on the graph, the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen is much lower because it has dissociated or unloaded more oxygen. So the hemoglobin is far less saturated. And why is this an advantage? Well, if hemoglobin dissociates with oxygen more readily, it delivers more oxygen to respiring cells, such as your muscle cells that you're using during this activity. 
they've got a higher rate of respiration, they have a higher demand for oxygen, and because hemoglobin's affinity has been reduced, it dissociates with oxygen more readily. This benefits our muscle cells because it means the hemoglobin is gonna unload and deliver more oxygen to those cells so they can continue to do more aerobic respiration, make more ATP for muscle contraction. It also means it's gonna delay the onset of anaerobic respiration, right? Which is great because we don't wanna produce lactic acid as it leads to muscle fatigue. I hope that's explained the bore shift. Remember, key terminology for this topic is key. So using words like decrease in blood pH causes a conformational change in hemoglobin. We're lowering hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen and hemoglobin dissociates with oxygen more readily. Um, and that's it. I hope that simplified this topic so that you can smash these questions in your exam.